My name is Cliff Weitzman, and if you told me that I'd be sitting here 10 years ago, I wouldn't have believed you. I was like, okay, well, we gotta meet, we gotta meet this Cliff guy. Now, Cliff, you were saying that Amar is leaving something out. My God, you're a good looking lad. <laughs> Look who's talking. No way. No, no way, Cliff. Hey, Cliff Smooth. So good. I fucking love it. Welcome to our New York apartment. Although it's a little bit more like a house, let me show you inside. We've been living here for about two months now. We got a spot in the middle of Manhattan in Tribeca. And we've got, once again, about eight of us living in this house. One of the things we love to do at Speechify is we flip locations every three to six months. So before this, we lived in Miami. Before that, we lived in London. Before that, we lived in LA. Before that, we lived in San Francisco for a bit. And so here's our place. You know, when you have dyslexia and your parents think you're lazy, and your teachers think you're stupid. Often, kids just go down a dark path. They give up on school. And a small percentage of kids end up developing this crazy resiliency and the belief that it's okay to try and fail and fail and fail, but eventually you succeed. When I was young, my teachers thought that I was stupid. My parents thought that I was slow. I thought that I was awesome. I just needed to prove it to people. I don't have a naturally high aptitude for computer science. I misspell variables, my programs break. The only reason I started doing tech was my younger brother Tyler is extremely talented at computer science and he built 30 iPhone apps when we were in high school. And I thought to myself, wow, if I wanted to be a tech entrepreneur, I can do that. And I saw this movie, The Social Network, about the founding of Facebook, and I was like, wow, this kid is in college. He's 19 years old wearing flip-flops, and he's taking down like some of the biggest companies in the world. And I believe that I can do it even though I was dyslexic. My thesis for how to start companies is number one, you wanna create as much value in the world as possible. Number two, you want to build something you could not have created a year ago with the technology that existed. And number three, you wanna ride some sort of shift in consumer behavior. So the big consumer shift started to be, one, people listen faster, Two, people started using audio as a primary form of information intake. What is the company you can build an intersection between audio and deep learning? And it's just one company that would be the best possible company for you to build. And it's Speechify. Um, this is the kitchen that also doubles as a workstation pretty often. Uh, we have Chaitu over there who leads product, Jan who leads a lot of our growth initiatives, Simon who leads operation, Tyler who leads the AI team. Chaitu, do you want to tell us the new project you're working on? We're now working on audiobooks, so we want to allow you to take any book in the world and listen to it and read it at the same time. We're taking the book and its audiobook and aligning them together so that you can see every word being highlighted and read it as you're listening to the book. So now we're going to sneak up to the roof. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with the team. And that's very, very important to understand. So in college, when I was building products, for the most part, I was doing it by myself. But I knew that if I wanted to build a trillion dollar company, I needed other people to come on the journey with me. I was born in India, and from a very young age, I've always wanted to work on building products that change people's lives. I'm originally from Bulgaria. I got very excited about startups. And I wanted to either have my own or work with someone extremely passionate like Cliff himself to build a successful company. So I've always loved building products. I started programming iPhone apps when I was 12 years old. The main thing I would procrastinate from all my homework was building apps. I did my college in India, computer science undergrad. Chetu introduced me to Cliff, came over, started doing some engineering, and ever since I've been just working on the product dog. We quickly under, uh, realized that a lot of our core values overlap, and now I can say that he's like a brother to me. We have the ability to change so many people's lives. Not only do you solve a problem that's important, it is so important that people report life-changing outcomes after using your product. When I started working on Speechify, it was kind of like this clicking moment for me where I realized that this app is really changing people's lives. It's one of these tools that so many people are using every single day and it's having such an impact on people. If you're the kind of person that really cares about the work that you do and the impact that you drive, by all means, uh, Speechify is where you should be. Most people will tell you that the number one reason for, for startup failing is co-founder disagreements. And the second reason, when it runs out of money. But that's not why startups fail. Because in Speechify's case, if we had zero money, if we had debt, if it was only me, I would not stop. Because it's so important for me to make sure that reading is never a barrier to learning for everyone. And it is truly my life mission to do that. So there's no way this company is going to stop. And that's why most startups fail. Most startups fail when it does not become fun for the founders to work on the company anymore. So pretty often, we'll end up having lunch up here. Or if you want to grab some tea or hang out, we'll set up little chairs. You get a great view of Manhattan here. So one of the best things about building your own thing 
is that you get to make up the rules. For me, I'm still in my 20s. I don't have a house, I don't have kids, I don't have a mortgage. It is the perfect time to go explore the world, see what it's like to live in London or Miami or San Francisco or LA or New York. So when I'm older, I can make an educated decision about which city in the world I wanna live in. It lets you get a lot more cultured and educated about the world, and it's also a lot of fun. If you're a really good computer scientist, designer, product manager, shoot us a message. We'd love to consider working with you at Speechify. Above everything in life, I think my goal is to be the person that I needed most when I was young. When I was young, the thing I needed was someone to read my books to me because I was the nine-year-old kid sitting in the back of the class just trying to cope. I feel like I have a responsibility. I was put on this earth to solve this problem. Text-to-speech was invented in like 1997, even earlier than that. And no one made a good version. So I had to suffer. And every kid my age had to suffer. And every kid in the next five years, next 10 years, next 15 years had to suffer. It shouldn't be that way. Someone should build something that fixes it. Okay, I have the opportunity to do that. Most people, they try to go through life not banging to the walls too much. And what they don't realize is the world around you was built by people no smarter than you and I. And you're 15 year old and you see that video, you're like, all right, I guess the world wasn't built by anyone smarter than me. So I can go and change it as well.